Welcome to part two of the apartment drumming trilogy where we're gonna talk about why this practice kit is so much fun to play. I am all about helping you become a better drummer which often starts with how we practice. Today I'm gonna to show you how I've mic'd my pads and my cymbals and how I run them through processing through my computer and logic. We'll do a lot of experimenting with effects and I'll show you the difference between effects versus no effects on this kit just to show you how powerful of a difference that is and how cool these effects can really be. But before we go any further, I wanna throw the question out there of how do you keep yourself motivated and inspired and having fun even if you have to practice drums quietly. I'd like to hear what you guys do. I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I do. So here's the setup with mics attached. I've just got SM57s on the clips clipped onto the drums and a Beta 52 down on the kick. These are basic mics, nothing crazy. I've got this handheld Tascam recorder that I actually bought back in like 2008. And I'm using that as an overhead because it's got a stereo condenser and so I can split that signal pan, one to the left pan, one to the right. It actually makes for a great, very natural sounding overhead that just records the room. I also added some dampening on the resonant heads. I just taped paper towels down there because I realized when you put the pads, when you put the Aquarian Super Pads on these drums and you hit it, well the pad muffles the top head, but the bottom head's still gonna ring. And I just found that ring kind of unwanted, kind of annoying, and so I taped up the bottom head so it's more of just a quick thump when I hit the pads. Also, this is kind of a unique issue you might run into if you buy the Aquarian Super Pads and you happen to have one of those Evans EMAD heads on your kick, the kind that has the, the foam ring around the edge that actually sticks out about that much because it's a foam ring on the head. The kick pad, that Batman shaped thing that's really cool, you attach that onto there, but it's not able to fully make contact with all of the head because of the raised foam ring and so it doesn't sound as cool. What I realized is if I spin the kick around and put the pad on the resonant head instead, it's fully making contact with it, and so I actually get a cleaner, more punchy, kind of thumpy sound as I play it, which is really great if I'm miking it up because now I've got a great sound to start out with I can do whatever I want with in Logic. So I actually spun the kick around and switched around the legs here. So I was able to make it work with the kick drum actually sitting backwards for this. So now let's head into Logic and let's take a look at what all is going on here on each channel. And we'll have plenty of audio and groove examples here to uh, hear some of the stuff that I'm adding. All right, so here we are in Logic where all the audio from the mics on the pads is coming. We've got individual tracks for each mic, kick, snare, tom one, tom two, overhead one, overhead two, which is overhead left, overhead right. So let's take a look at some of the basic processing we've got going on, nothing crazy. So over here in the mix window, we can get a better look at that. We've got compressors on the kick and the snare, nothing extreme going on, roughly four to one compression, 20 millisecond attack, uh, much longer release. Here's the kick compressor. We've got it kind of cranking down on it so that when we've got it playing, you can definitely see it working. We've got about five dB reduction on average, four to five. And what we've got on the snare is really pretty similar. We've actually got even more reduction going on in the snare, and that's helping give it kind of that pop, popping sound that's helping it crack, stand out well in the mix, which makes it more fun to play. And then just basic EQ, mostly subtractive stuff, but we've got a little bit of boost to bring up some low end in the kick, a little bit of 1K boost to bring up some snap on the snare, a lot of low mid reduction. On the overheads, we're rolling off lows, everything below about 100 hertz just because we don't need it, so that helps clean up the mix. We've also got this envelope plug-in on the kick, which is basically a transient designer. This is what Logic calls theirs. We're boosting up that attack on the kick, so it helps it stick out more in the mix and be punchier and also more audible on small speakers, like on phone speakers. So let's listen to it with it and then without it. So right now we've got it turned on. And now turned off. Kick's a little bit thumpier, less punchy without it. So I think it's just one of those fun things to add in there. And it actually makes more sense later on as we're adding more effects because we want it to be super punchy. And we've got a couple basic reverbs, just a short plate, um, which kind of helps add to that sound on the snare. Also a medium reverb that I've got just a little bit of um, just, just to make the room feel bigger. Too much of that and it does get really crazy. Let's play around with those. 
Here's the short play. I'm gonna crank that up a bit. Starts to sound like we're in like a locker room or a bathroom or something. <laughs> so it could be a really creative effect. Right now I just want it very subtle. And so that's why I've got it sitting down here about minus 18. And for some of the medium verb. Sounds like we're in like a high school gymnasium, which is also a cool effect, but not something I want a lot of for now. We might add some more of that in later though, as we're getting creative and making things crazy, which we'll do in the next video. So now let's do a comparison with effects, with no effects right now. We've got all the basic effects going. I'm gonna just gradually turn them off as we go. Now it's totally dry. We crank up the signal a little bit to compensate since we turned off the compressors. It definitely sounds a lot more like it's in a bedroom now. Now bringing the reverbs back in and the compressors, EQs, and the transient designer. Also got a little bit of panning going on, just some basic stuff down here. So really keeping it basic, keeping it subtle. We'll get into the, some more crazy stuff in the next video where we look at more creative processing we can do to really make the drum sound crazy and funky. The possibilities are limitless. We can get really creative. So I'm excited for that. We'll do that in the next video.